Oh, I got a little something right there. Ah, oh, are you kidding me? When will I learn to keep dental floss in here? Hello everyone, my name is Andrea and welcome or welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I wanna share with you three important questions to ask yourself to become more comfortable with decluttering and my number one tip that no one is talking about when it comes to decluttering. In case you missed it, I have been decluttering my entire home using the KonMari method or the method that was created by Marie Kondo. In case you're not familiar, when you're using the KonMari system, you are decluttering based on category rather than by room. I happen to be loving this method, but I don't wanna to spend too much time talking about that because there's more important things to discuss today. The three main categories are clothing, books and papers. And I have done all those declutters, they were filmed and you can check them out on my channel. But now that those three main categories are done, what's next? Well, that would actually be a category called kimono. Now, if you're like me, you heard the word kimono and said, hey, I don't have any kimonos, so I'm off the hook. And um, no, because this type of kimono is spelled K-I-M-O-N-O -O, and it is the official dress of Japan. This other type of kimono is spelled K-O-M-O-N-O -O, and that is the Japanese word for small article or accessory, what we usually refer to as miscellaneous things. So how do you handle all of the miscellaneous items in your home? The best way for me to tell you is to show you here in the book. Now, if you saw my book declutter video, you're probably thinking that I would never recommend a book, but I really feel that it is necessary reading. If you're going to do a KonMari declutter, you also get to have the book available to be a roadmap for you. Over here, we have all the different miscellaneous categories. Now, I will say that some of these categories are a little bit vague, and I think there's two reasons for that. First of all, everybody has different stuff in their home. So keeping the categories a little bit vague helps you figure out which things to work on next. Also, this book was printed in 2014 and that was eight years ago. So that means that some of the things that are in our homes now weren't in our homes eight years ago and vice versa. So I think she really tried to keep these categories a little bit more open to interpretation so that they would continue to be relevant long past the time that they were printed. What we can see here from the list is that our first category is CDs and DVDs. <laughs> I cannot say the word CD and keep a straight face. I have probably not had a CD in my home in six or seven years. I decluttered them a very long time ago. I moved to digital music like a great many people. I started out with an iPod and then I eventually transitioned into streaming services like Pandora or Spotify. My current favorite is Spotify. So when I got to this category, I decided to clean up my Spotify playlist. My playlist had gotten to the point where I didn't enjoy listening to music and that is really unusual for me. I knew it would be a big undertaking. It's not something that I really looked forward to doing by any means, but I'm really glad that I did it. Uh, I now have playlists that I really enjoy listening to. They have uh, definitely been there for me as I like listening to music when I declutter. I've decluttered a lot more than what you've seen here on camera. If you like this sort of thing, well, you know, do stuff and stay tuned and then you won't miss any future cluttering videos that I upload. So while I did a great bit of work to get my playlists all cleaned up, unfortunately, I didn't record any of that process, but in all honesty, it was me over the course of several weeks like, like this on my phone cleaning up my playlists. And on top of that, I don't have that big satisfying after photo with a box overflowing with discarded items. Uh, I can tell you that I did it and it was totally worth it. And that's all I can say. Now let's take a look at the DVD collection. And I'll be completely honest with you, this is a declutter that took me about a year to do. We kept all of our DVDs in the family room, in the media console. So they were all in one place and easy to get to. I initially went through and I grabbed all of the like adult movies, if you will, things that were maybe rated R, just not altogether kids and family movies. 
I pulled those out of the media console about a year ago, gifted them away, and have not missed a single one of them. When it came to the kids' videos, there was part of me that wanted to have the kids go through the videos and do a declutter because I thought, who better than the the people who are most likely to watch these movies go through them? And my initial plan was to have to work on this over the summer, you know, last summer. <laughs> Unfortunately, we didn't get around to it. They had a couple of breaks in school since then, and we still haven't gotten around to it. So I finally decided that I'm just gonna take on this declutter by myself. What I found is videos in our collection that I didn't feel comfortable getting rid of. Since I had plenty of time to think this out, I started asking myself some very important questions. Question number one is, how long has it been since we've used these? The answer is approximately a year and a half. That was when we moved into our new house. We didn't have internet for a few days, so we weren't able to stream everything like we normally do, like on Netflix or YouTube. This brings me to my next question, which is why are we not using this? I mean, in a way I kind of answered it already. And to put it very simply, we are people that use a smart TV and we have a digital library. We're really not using a DVD player. So all this brings me to my third question, which is kind of a three-part question. So maybe it's like a try question. My third question, my three-part question, my try question, whatever it is you wish to call it is, if I woke up this morning and discovered this entire collection was gone, would I replace it? Which begs the question, is it even replaceable? And am I already using something else? To put it in other words, am I already living without this? Okay, so let's dig into those questions. Would I replace these items? If nobody has used them in a year and a half, probably no one would miss them, so no, I wouldn't replace them. For the next part of the question, is this replaceable? If it's something like a, you know, a child's dance recital or school play, then no, it's not replaceable. Those things were set aside, they're sentimental, I'm not decluttering those. There were some actual movies that I thought would be difficult to replace. So let's take for example, this drawer over here, which houses a bunch of Bible story DVDs. These are things that were gifted to my children and I feel like they've kind of outgrown them, but I wasn't ready to let go of them because I thought that they would be difficult to replace. A Google search revealed that these were actually available to me through my Amazon Prime video subscription at no additional charge. So the fact that they were available on Amazon and there was a serendipitous moment where I, somebody on Facebook was requesting items for their church's nursery, they were able to pick them up within 24 hours. I was able to get them out of the house quickly and they were going to somebody who wanted them. But if for any reason anyone in the house decided they wanted to see any of those videos, there was a place that we could watch them again. Once I realized I could search and see if these movies were available elsewhere, it made it so much easier to get rid of everything else. Most everything was available through a streaming service. We already had a copy in our digital library. Just about everything was available to me in a different format. And if it wasn't, it was possible for me to repurchase it should anybody be missing it. The third part of that question, am I already using something else or am I living without it? Absolutely. Basically, I've already explained that because we're streaming or we're using digital libraries, we're not using any of these physical forms. Once I realized all of that, I felt very comfortable about packing everything up and giving it away. So now that we've talked about all of that, I bet you're wondering what my number one tip for decluttering is. It's actually something that I feel not enough people talk about, and that is knowing where your stuff is going to go once you've got it all boxed up. Andrea, what does that mean? Well, let's look at me when I got started. I did a really good job pulling things out of cabinets and closets and whatever and packing them up in a box, taping the box shut so I wasn't tempted to go in and pull anything out. Then the box went to the garage where it hung out for like months. It made me realize, I think I need to figure out where these boxes are going Otherwise, they're never getting out of here. The declutter isn't finished until the stuff is truly out of your house. It was still in my house. It hadn't gone anywhere. It just looked different. It was in a different container. I feel that there's a number of ways that you can go about this. And if you're anything like me, it's really hard to just throw something in the trash when you feel like there's still plenty of life left in it. It can still be utilized for its intended purpose and so on and so forth. Typically speaking, I like to either donate my items or give them away. 
selling. Sometimes I sell, that is a whole nother video. My favorite way to get items out of my home is to gift them. Local Facebook pages have been a great way for me to find a home where my unwanted things. So that is one way I found to get rid of things in my home, but however you choose, Definitely make that choice before you start decluttering. Is an organization going to come to your house and pick things up? Are you going to have a person come to your house? Are you going to drop them off at a donation center? That is a plan that you need to have in place so that once that decluttering is complete, there is a plan. So to recap, if you want to feel more comfortable about decluttering, you want to ask yourself, how long has it been since I've used this? Why haven't I used it in so long? And if I discovered that this item had disappeared tomorrow, would I replace it? If the answer to those questions is, it's been too long because I'm using something else or I'm no longer using this and I haven't even missed this thing, so why would I replace it? Then it's probably a good idea to let it go. And it's probably a good idea to know where those items are going to so you can truly get them out of your house. That is all for today. I thank you so much for spending your time with me and I will see you in my next video.